Hey team, welcome to another Building Better Baseball timeout. And in today's timeout, we're going to talk about foul balls versus out of play and what the difference is. I'm Coach Hart, and in these timeouts, I teach you baseball rules and I teach you how to play the game. So let's dive right into it. The three areas in baseball, I'm talking about on the field. In baseball, there are three areas the ball can go on a play, whether it's a batted ball or a throw by the defense. It can go in fair territory, so a batted ball into fair territory, or throws, all the throws that go on in the field, they can go in fair territory. They can go in foul territory, or they can go out of play. And we're going to cover the differences in this timeout today. Fair territory, as you can see from this picture, this is a fair ball, so the white line on each side of the field that extends from home plate to the outfield fence is called the foul line. So this line right here, it extends from here, from home plate, the tip of home plate right here, it goes all the way down to the outfield fence that you can't see right now, but it goes all the way to the end of the field. And there's one on the other side too that goes down the first base side. Anything, any ball that is in between those two lines in the field of play, that is a fair ball. That is fair territory. That is where all the plays happen. So these white lines right here, the foul lines, those are very similar to out-of-bounds lines in other sports like soccer or football. You know, the lines on the side of the field where there's out-of-bounds. These serve the same purpose in baseball. Any ball hit between these lines is a fair ball. That means it's playable by the defense and the batter has to run. So if the batter hits the ball inside this fair territory, they have to run. No matter where it's hit, how far it's hit, how high it's hit, no matter where it is, they have to run. Foul territory. This is a great example of a field that has a bunch of foul territory. So as you can see, the line that we just looked at is right here. This is the third baseline. That's home plate. This is the first baseline. As you can see, it goes all the way down to the right field line. Everything over here where the blue arrows are, that is all foul territory. So that is a foul ball if the ball is hit there. Any ball hit on the outside of those lines is a foul ball. The batter does not run on a foul ball. So if they pop it up or if they ground out or if they do anything, if they hit the ball in this area, in this foul ground area, they do not run. That's not a ball that they can run on. If the ball hits the ground or hits a fence, it's a strike. It's just treated like a foul ball. If it hits the ground or it hits some type of fence, like the dugout fence, then that's just a foul ball and it gets treated like a strike. Or just like we just talked about in the previous timeout, it's just a foul ball. But if it's a pop-up, the defense can catch it. If they catch it, that's an out. So let's say the pitcher is right here, right? And there's a pop-up into foul territory right around here. The pitcher is able to run from the mound all the way over here, right here in foul ground, and catch the ball. If he catches the ball, that is an out. The batter is out. So any pop-up or any ball that does not hit the ground or hit the fence that is caught in foul territory, that is an out. So out of play is the next one, the last one. Any ball hit outside of the field of play both fair and foul. So the field of play is both foul territory and fair territory. That's called out of play. So in this example, this fence right here, if the ball gets hit from here and it goes all the way over here outside of the fence, that's called out of play. So out of the field of play. For the batter, it's considered a foul ball and a strike, just like before, right? A ball out of play is not playable by the defense. So that's the difference. In foul territory, so in this field, this foul territory extends from the white line right here to the fence right here. So all of this green area right here, that is in play. That is foul territory. If there's a pop-up there, the guy can catch it, and that's an out. If the ball goes outside of this fence, obviously there's no player that can jump the fence, but if there wasn't a fence there, they wouldn't be able to run over here and catch the ball. That would be out of play. That's not allowed. So the defense cannot play a ball that's out of play. So out of play with no fence. If there's no fence to mark out of play, there will be a white line similar to the foul line. So as you can see this white line here for the foul line, if there is no fence, let's say there's no fence right here, there would be a white line that goes and marks the out of play line just like the foul line here. 
So there would be a white line here, and there will be a white line where this fence is, right? If there is no fence, for pop-ups close to that line, the defense must keep at least one foot on or in the field of play. So what does that mean? They cannot run over here and be out of play and catch the ball. That does not count. That is a dead ball. That is not an out. If there is a ball that is over here, they need to have their one foot in play and reach over the line, at least having one foot in or on the field of play to catch the ball. So they have to reach over the line and catch the ball. If they have one foot in or on the field of play, then that is an out. If for any reason they cross over that line and they do not have a foot in play, then that is not an out. That is out of play, and the ball just goes back to the pitcher. If a running catch is made, the throw must be from the field of play. So let me explain. Let's say that there's no fence here and there's a line, right? Let's say that the left fielder is out here, right? And there's a ball that goes all the way over here, and it's like right over here in this foul territory, right? The left fielder is sprinting as fast as they can to catch the ball. They do a running, sprinting catch. They catch the ball here, where my cursor is, and they travel outside of the field of play. So they travel, they make the catch in foul territory, so that's an out, and they travel outside. Their momentum from running so fast carries them outside of the field of play, so they carries them out of play. They cannot throw the ball back to the field. Let's say there's someone running from third to, third to home or second to third. They cannot throw the ball from out of play. They have to now run from out of play, establish themselves in the field of play, in foul territory, and then they can throw the ball to the infield. They are not allowed to throw from out of play. They have to run back to the field of play, to foul territory, and then they can throw the ball and put it back in play. So that's a little detail that not many people know. So if there is a catch, a running catch, in that takes you into out of play area, you have to establish yourself back in the field of play before you can throw it back into the field. One example is, for example, this is the outfield fence that marks the end of the field of play. It's a short fence, right? So as you can see, this yellow line, that's a pretty short fence. That's probably about up to my chest, right? Any ball hit over this fence is a home run. So this right here, that's called the backstop, where it's behind home plate and behind the catcher. That is where home plate is. So if any hitter hits it over this fence, that is a home run. The defender is not allowed to jump over the fence and catch the ball. They can't just jump over the fence and be over here without their foot being in play and catch the ball. That's a home run still. At least one foot must stay in the field of play. So in order to catch that ball, they would have to kind of get their waist or belly up onto the fence and lean and try to rob that home run. But like I said, they have to keep at least one foot in the field of play in order for it to be an out. They can't just jump the fence and then catch the ball. That doesn't count. Last thing is any openings in the field, any openings on the field, just like this picture where there's no door, there's just an opening. On some fields, there are openings where the ball can go, such as this picture, right? A common area is the dugout. If the dugout has a door or the dugout has an open space, the ball a lot of times goes from the field of play into the dugout, which is out of play. These areas are out of play. So if this ball was in this field of play and there was an errant throw, there was a bad throw, and the ball rolled outside of this door, that would be out of play. So what happens then? The umpires and coaches will discuss these areas in pregame. So the umpires, before the game starts, they will discuss all of these areas that could potentially be avenues for the ball to go out of play. If a live ball goes through these types of openings or in these areas, that ball is now a dead ball and the play stops. So if there's a live play going on and the ball is being thrown around the field and there's a bad throw and the ball goes in the dugout or the ball goes outside of this area like this on a live play, that is now a dead ball and the play stops. It, the play immediately stops. The only thing is any runners on base will advance two bases from the moment the ball crossed the out of play line. So the runners who are on base, let's say there's a runner on first base and the ball crossed this line and went out of play. That runner now goes to third base. They advance two bases anytime the ball goes out of play. So it's very important for players and teams to make sure that they make good throws, 
and whatever throws that they can, make sure that they do not let the ball go out of play because the runners will advance two bases every time from the moment the ball crosses the line. So if the runner is running to second base and they hit and their foot hits second base before the ball crosses this line to go out of play and the ball goes out of play, that player now scores. He gets, he gets to go from second to home because the ball went out of play. So always make sure that you keep track of the ball and you don't let it go out of play. Thanks for taking the time out with Building Better Baseball. Remember, I'm Coach Hart. If you liked what you saw, then make sure you subscribe, support the channel, and hit that bell icon too so you don't miss a video. Thanks for taking the time out, and I'll see you in the next one.